boy, Easton, he got a family. And I would say that's, from a personal perspective, that's what's, what is the next level for Andy. So welcome to season three, Corn Warriors. Get that tanker ready. I gotta figure out how to get you home. I mean, the only thing really affects me is kryptonite. It's June 8th, and it's kind of push come to shove. We're basically playing through some of the wet stuff, around a few things. Hi, my name is Brooks Cardinal. Um, with Cardinal Farms out of Oak Town, Indiana. My name is Brooks Cardinal. We're here at Cardinal Farms in Oaktown, Indiana. See that tree over there? Cardinal tree, That's where it all started. That's where my great grandpa came here in 1941, came up here and started farming. That's where this all originated from. And now I'm the fourth generation Cardinal. It's me and my brother out here that we farm together. And between both of us, we've got five boys. That'll be the fifth generation coming up. I mean, it's all about the next generation and keep the Cardinal Farms name going. Out here, we raise corn, soybeans, wheat, and watermelons. We've learned a lot from the watermelon business that we've brought to the grain side. And, and that's definitely helped us in our high management corn. I don't think anyone can consider themselves a farmer until they farm some bottoms ground. My honest opinion, I think, there, it's such a challenge. Attention to detail. It's getting out there when you need to be out there. Yeah, you gotta plan it right, that's very important, but the rest of the season too, you gotta get it side dressed. You know, that corn can't have a bad day, and, and that's key, and it's a little bit, it worries me a little bit with so many acres of corn, trying to get back and get it side dressed and get everything taken care of in, in time, so. Hoping for the best. This is the first year since I've been planting, say 20 years, that I've not planted April corn. Just what makes me nervous is, you know, we're May 7th getting started and you're as wet as it is and as high as that river's been and it's not going down very quick. I mean, you're talking four weeks, at least three weeks if it quits raining now. It's, it's going to be pushing it, getting our corn in down in the bottoms. Same as, same as grain. I mean, this wet weather has kept us out of watermelons as well, so we're trying to play catch up and get them things planted. This is the first year that we've not been planting by the end of April. We've never had anything that's into May, so we're definitely behind. But now that it's dry, then we really don't have an option. We've got to at least try to get it in the ground and just hope and pray for the best. Just uh, getting rolling planting finally. Just got done mixing up some fertilizer. 91. Okay, 215. Got it, hot rods. Yep, finally ready to roll. We're doing a lot of things good, but we've got a lot of room for improvements. Hold on. I need to get out and check my corn real quick. Nothing but the best. Just, we gotta watch where we're at. We're in a tough market now, and I mean, it's all about bottom line, and so, I mean, that's gonna take an effect. Let's go check some debt. Pretty close in there, ain't they? We're about two inches deep, just right. 
I feel we've been building our soils real well with potassium the last couple years. Something we really learned last year, the later fungicide application seemed to really respond. I mean, that stay green in that plant, keeping that plant healthy and alive longer, um, gained us better test weight and, and more yield. And so we'll be doing a lot more of that this year. It's all about scouting and, and uh, keeping an eye on it, staying ahead of it. See what happens. Um, I'm excited. I really am. I mean, the underdog for sure coming in. I'm hoping we can see some foreign bushel corn this year. I've learned a lot from every one of the every one of the warriors, and I mean, it's an honor to be here, be here going up with them for sure. But uh, I got my work cut out for me for sure. Hard work pays off. If you give it your all, stay there until the job's done. It, I think it pays for itself. It's hard to pencil it out to see it, but it pays for itself. Yeah, the competition begins here, you know. <laughs> well, that's part of the problem with the manure. You spread, don't just help the corn until you get it sprayed. It kind of helps the, the weeds too. Load up about 1,300 gallons. Yes. Gotta see, I'll make sure how many gallons in there. I think I got 700 left. Big parts where you grow a lot of corn, they're hurting, wet. Parts of Iowa, majority of Illinois, majority of Indiana, Nebraska ain't doing so hot. Kind of depressing. First time I've ever seen water sitting in this field. May 8th and it's too wet to even be spraying. Unbelievable. But Randy Dowdy said the Midwest is the land of milk and honey. We got it so easy. We've never seen water sit there in the field here. And look at this. Look at him. Big no-no. What do you do? Need about four days of drying than what we really need. May 8th, May 9th, and we're completely, basically saturated again. You know, this field here is one of the driest fields we got, always is, and it's barely drying up. We're tracking in, spraying, and calling for heavy rain possibility tomorrow. You know, it's just not looking real good for the Midwest. We ain't got that perfect weather that Randy and David's got out there on the East Coast, you know, the tri-state up through southern Indiana, western Kentucky, southern Illinois, it seems like them guys get hit pretty hard all the time. The contest field there is on 15-foot center of creek bottom, and how we were tracking in that field. Now it's getting so damn woolly, it'll never dry out. I just said I'm pretty disappointed how wet it is. I figured it'd be a lot drier than this out here. We should have had corn planted a month ago. Ain't much else we do, drink beer, throw darts. And we're sitting here, what is today, the 9th of May. Um, to tell you how close we've been to planting this year, we don't even have any fertilizer here yet. We've not even got excited about it yet, planting. Ah, oh, this just freaking sucks. We deal with it. Yeah. 
This is absolutely the latest that we've ever done nothing. I mean, not even 200 acres of sprayed and it was wet. We rutted it up, but fields are getting so damn woolly. Uh, and none of the tillage equipment had, has touched dirt yet this year. It's the way it is. It's been one of them rough years. I don't, think, I don't think Dan has anything planted. I don't think Matt has anything planted. Um, we don't have anything planted. Oh, that was a bullseye. Nothing, nothing for me. This spring has been a mess. I've been going to school and trying to do pre-summer stuff, and this planting season has been a disaster, so I've dropped a lot of balls, and that was one of them. I finished June 1st last year. This year, I started June 3rd. Technically, I didn't. I started in May, but we planted two and a half acres, and then I had to spend two hours digging the planter out from all the mud, so we really started June 3rd. At this point, the planter's been stuck three times. Uh, we've spent five to six hours total probably digging mud out of the planter. Right now we've got an issue with uh, a broken wheel on the planter. I'm gonna run to Milan and I'm gonna get some parts from them and we're gonna come back hopefully and get it going this afternoon. I would say our stands should be excellent. We shouldn't have any emergence problems except for the places that were a little wet when we planted them. Um, so we will have some issues, but we will not have the widespread stand inconsistency that a lot of guys who planted earlier will have. If half the stand was planted a month ago, whether that'll make up for the fact that our stands are more consistent, I, I would guess it probably will. I probably saw maybe 10 fields between here and, and north central Indiana that were what I would call good, and the vast majority were not even planted. It's gonna be an interesting not going to be one anybody's going to forget anytime soon, I can tell you that. I mean, it's been basically short of a, a natural disaster. Because of the high water levels, we haven't been able to ship grain since January. I've got 85% of my grain on hand from last year at this point, which we should have been empty. I mean, we should have had it all delivered by now. We can't ship any grain because the river is too high. I mean, the river has been constantly above flood stage, with the exception of maybe a couple days. No barges up the river means no grain down the river. So that's kind of where we've been at. And I would say at this point, you know, we're probably still a few weeks away from being able to ship any grains. I've come to the realization there's not a darn thing I can do about it, and it's gonna be what it's gonna be. We were better off than most that we didn't have any fertilizer down, we didn't have any money spent. So had we not gotten this window that we've gotten all of, almost all of our corn planted in, we would have taken prevent plan and, and moved on to next year. Prevent plan insurance is not going to cover all of it. My planter passed. By the time you add up all the fertilizers and seed and everything else, cost me almost $220 an acre. So I'm, if it's not fit, I'm not going to spend that money. There's a lot of people that don't agree with that. They say just sock it in and take the yield hit, but that's what revenue insurance is for, and that's just not how I'm going to approach things. We planted more of a 100-day hybrid we were going to plant anyway. We more or less stuck with the hybrid mix that we had stuck, we were planning on. And the biggest problem is we have hybrids that are adapted to grow in central and western Illinois that with certain levels of heat and humidity. And you just go and plant 100-day hybrids that aren't adapted to that, and you can have more problems than you would have had it otherwise. The only thing that's going to get us now is a frost. If we get an early frost, then we're going to be in trouble. But we will certainly not be the only ones. At this point, the goals for this year involve not losing any money if I can avoid it. If I can pay all my bills and get to next year, then that's, that's probably the extent of my goals at this point. Uh, Mother Nature has handed it to us pretty good so far this year. 
it's going to be what it's going to be. I mean, the yield contest this year is going to be a crapshoot because you've got guys that didn't get stuff in that are contenders that would have normally gotten stuff in at a certain time. And you've got guys that, you know, mudded stuff in to try to get it done. And so those are going to come out and it's going to be hard to find consistent 10 acre blocks that you can use for the contest. So that aren't going to have holes in them. I mean, there's a couple fields to the south of us where we do some custom harvesting and stuff that look decent. Uh, but other than that, it's they're all patchy. If anybody says they can tell you what it's going to make their full crap, because they don't know. The people at Brant were kind enough to help me out with some micronutrient solutions that we hadn't been able to track down in the past, so they were able to get that for me. We've been very, very happy with the service to this point we've gotten from Brant. If I had known they were going to be as easy to deal with as they are, we probably would have started dealing with them a long time ago. I mean, from last year, we, we already made some changes. You know, we sat down with my agronomist, him telling me I needed to up some stuff, and me telling him that it's freaking June and I need to get it done, and him saying I don't care, you need to do it anyway, and so it's been a process. You know, we blew half an ear off because we ran out of gas before we could get it side dressed, so. You blow half an ear off and it still makes 240, 250. I mean, you know you were on the, the right track and we blew it and more times than not going slow and doing the right thing has paid more than getting in a hurry and doing stuff the wrong way. So I'm sure the Twitter chorus will be real loud if, it's a, if it blows up in my face. Well, I got a little boy. He's got a family that I didn't have. From a personal perspective, that's what's the next level for Andy. All right, you want to walk with Daddy to the pivot? Yeah, we'll turn it on. We'll come back when we ride the track. Okay? We're excited to be working with growers from all over the country, learning from growers, teaching growers what we've learned. We're doing camps all over. We got a next level camp in Ohio. Original four was Nebraska, Ohio, Illinois, and um, South Dakota. This past year we added uh, North Dakota, Indiana, Kentucky, Iowa, and a second location in Nebraska. And we got more that showed interest in different states. Our motto has been the difference between a good farmer and a great farmer is time and attention to detail. So what we're out to do is attract the good farmers and help teach them some of what we've done, share information, teach them to share information, share information that we know, let us learn together, and help make some of those good farmers that decide to be proactive and just break the trend of being a trend follower and become trendsetters, help make good farmers great farmers. That's, that's what we're doing. Yeah, they get four meetings a year. They get a meeting in December, November, December time frame, and then one in February, January, February, March. Um, get two meetings in the fall and winter, and they get two meetings in the summer where we actually go walk fields for growers. Some of the things that I'm trying new, we played around this year with precision planting is um, furrow force. I'm kind of excited about what it may offer. Pretty neat. We got the beta test. It's definitely going to be something that needs to be on people's radar going forward. Um, we've been using Delta Force for a couple of years. Uh, we're playing around with Conceal. We've also been doing some of our version. Everybody knows I kind of, I guess, coined the phrase and tube tube two, and we're using their system to put out fertilizer on both sides of the road. We don't, we don't use speed tubes to be able to plant fast. We use them to be able to take and drop the seed two to three inches into the furrow instead of dropping down the seed to the foot. We're embracing technology to help guide our decision-making processes. Um, technology's great when it works. For anybody that's been using technology for a while knows that sometimes there's hiccups, but 
Uh, luckily, they got good people. Um, I work with Southern Crop Solutions out of uh, South Carolina, and they're the, they're my precision dealer. And Robbie and Robert have done a great job. Wesley works for them as well. They've come down and spent two to three to four weeks, you know, helping get planters set up and get them uh, ready to roll. Watch the trailer. <laughs> Call that the Matt Swanson pile. It's going in the intercropping. He's our intercropping guy, remember? You show him how it's done, huh? I don't know about that. We use it where we can. It's slow release, so it doesn't leach near as bad as commercial fertilizer. Just a process. You have to pay to fill the litter. You have to pay to get it hauled. You have to pay to get it spread. We just don't have enough manpower to haul it, and equipment to haul it ourselves, or to, to do all the spreading that's needed. So we have to depend on some other people. And this litter became available at the last minute. It'd be worth it in the long run, I feel like, to, to be patient because chicken litter is good stuff, and this is coming from a, a lady that I know. And I've been buying litter from for quite some time. She owns the chicken houses, and it's always good litter when we get it. Make your AB line next to the dirt road. If you don't mind. Now work your way this way. Well, Everything's still on 70 foot pattern? Everything's on 70 foot. Okay. All the way up to that train. What I'm saying, I can, there ain't no way to straighten that out unless I wrap it with that. You're going to probably have to wrap it. Well, that's fine. Because I can't get... But everything's on 70 foot. I can't do but the two passes of corn is what I'm saying. I'll, I'll look at it. Who got you? You ready to go? Who's got you? I saw this right here. You didn't shave this morning? I'm trying to roll it out. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy, okay? Oh, Hello, sweetness. This is the cob section, right? Tons of salt on it, just right. Yeah, I guess if we can't plan it, you might as yeah. well eat it, right? Nope. <laughs> He hit the top, yep, he did, he hit the top of the yellow. Like two or three balls, wasn't it? Yes, it was. So yeah, when little Emerson was, was that AU and softball? She, yep. She had four balls that were like Could have been home a foot that's from her. going out. That's when she was the stud of the... Yeah, now I'm not. <laughs> She's already peaked. I'll tell you what, get a nice base hit here makes this game interesting. 4-3 then. Two runs of score. Come on, Ryan. Let's go, Ryan. Let's go. Go dig it, dig it! Well, you don't know. I mean, everything's a gamble. Where are you going to stand in the field? How hard to hit? Maybe a little tiny girl up there can freaking nail it out to the fence. Or you could have a big girl up there that can't hit it or squat. It's kind of like farming. You just never know. Oh, well. On to the next game. Just like farming, on to the next season, right? But we haven't even got the season started. It's all right, Cobb. It's game. It's not sectional. Don't matter. He's coming. You ready to make it rain? Uh-huh. Here he comes. You see all that water?
fish and start flowering. Watch out, Kip Colors. It was here on this farm. We had that big crop set a personal best. And I like to say, you know, don't worry about those big goals. Just continue to set a personal best or farm best. And, you know, just keep taking those little steps. So, 2019, I just want to set a personal best deal for us. That would be exciting. We are live again. I just need to get Gene to be a little bit quieter. He's got to put a better muffler on that helicopter. We've used choppers and planes in the past. I still think we're doing better than any aerial applicator can do.